Mega Man X is a whole lot of Mavericks, and some of these Mavericks are, uh, well, actually kinda hard to take down, which is why we're here today, to go over the hardest Maverick from every Mega Man X game, X through X8. And, uh, who knows, maybe I'll teach you guys some tips and tricks on taking these suckers down, as long as you behave yourselves. Mega Man X1, the first Mega Man X game on the Super Nintendo, has eight of the most iconic Mavericks in the entire series. To be honest, I'd actually say all of these Mavericks are super easy, which makes choosing the hardest from this game a pretty difficult task. But this video is called the hardest Maverick from every Mega Man X game and not the top 10 hardest Mavericks of all time, so don't get it twisted. Whenever I choose the hardest Maverick from this game, I don't want to see any comments saying, but, 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 but the Maverick you chose is easy, how could you say he's hard because I just told you none of them are hard but even in a game full of easy bosses one still must be the hardest due to relative value so let's start taking a look at these guys chill penguin was already chosen as the easiest maverick from this game in another video which means chill penguin is not going to be the hardest who would have thought flame mammoth is also laughably easy to a point where it is difficult to die even if you tried to so there's no way that guy is the hardest either storm eagle is also known for being very easy and probably widely considered to be the second easiest Maverick in the entire game, only under Chill Penguin. I don't think I've ever died to this guy in my entire life, but despite telling my comment section to keep it a secret if they happen to, lots of people still really felt the need to admit that they have died to Storm Eagle for whatever reason, and I'm not sure how that's even possible considering most of Storm Eagle's attacks don't do damage, but I hope the people who die to Storm Eagle are not too offended by the fact that he is not the hardest Maverick from Mega Man X. But even if those people are offended, by me saying that, I don't care, I'm literally right, I mean Storm Eagle is not the hardest Maverick for Mega Man X objectively, is anyone really gonna argue that in the comments, seriously? If you think Storm Eagle is objectively the hardest Maverick for Mega Man X, you are dumb, you're stupid, you're smelly. Spark Mandrill is an interesting Maverick in terms of difficulty, because if you don't have his weakness then the fight can actually be a decent challenge, but if you do have his weakness, well, you basically get to skip the fight altogether. Even without the weakness, Spark Mandrill clearly is not the hardest Maverick though, his fight it's a little bit challenging when he isn't indefinitely frozen in ice, but even still, it's not difficult to keep up with and defeat. Armored Armadillo may be the most medium Maverick from Mega Man X1, but we won't know that for sure until I make the most medium Mavericks video, which will never happen! Anyway, we all know and love Armored Armadillo. His fight is super fun with and without the weakness, but it never becomes too challenging or frustrating at any point. Also, we all love regular Armadillo, so subscribe if you would like to give regular Armadillo a hug in real life. This leaves us with three remaining Mavericks who I feel like are all considered to be fairly difficult being Sting Chameleon, Launch Octopus, and Boomer Kawanger. Now don't make me remind you guys that I still find these guys easy overall. I just think that when compared to every other fight in Mega Man X1, these three stand out for being the most challenging with or without weapons. I guess technically you are able to cheese Sting Chameleon and Boomer Kawanger with special weapons, which is something you can't do that easily with Launch Octopus. Without weapons though, Sting Chameleon and Boomer Kawanger's fights become a lot more challenging. They aren't impossible or anything like that, but Sting Chameleon's battle just has a lot of moving parts, while Boomer Kawanger just teleports all over the darn place, and it's annoying! But Launch Octopus isn't someone to sneeze at. He doesn't seem overwhelming, but Launch Octopus just launches millions of projectiles at you steadily over the course of the fight, and if you aren't careful, your health bar will drain faster than you realize. On top of that, using the big blue balls doesn't help you or do as many favors as some of the other special weapon weaknesses do, so you're pretty much on your own. This was a a really close one, and I honestly think this is a decision I could change my mind on next week or something, but I've gotta say, I really think Launch Octopus is the hardest Maverick from Mega Man X1. Because yeah, like Sting Chameleon and Boomer Kawanger are challenging, but with the special weapons, they're just too easy to cheese. So like, yeah, also it's my video, please don't argue with me, that's not nice. Go make your own video, you jerk. Mega Man X2, the second Mega Man X game on the Super Nintendo, greets us with some very silly looking Mavericks. I actually am a pretty big fan of every single Maverick from Mega Man X2, so I don't understand a lot of the complaints about these guys, but at the same time, they do look kinda silly. Every single one of these guys is also incredibly easy to an even bigger extent than in Mega Man X1, so once again, it's going to be challenging finding any challenge in these boss battles. Flamestack has already been granted the award for the easiest Maverick from Mega Man X2, meaning he probably will 
will not qualify for the most difficult, but he still gets bonus points for his color changing hair as always. Overdrive Ostrich is another Maverick that's just incredibly easy. I'm not sure if I've even ever fought this dude with his weakness due to him being so incredibly easy to murder without it. Despite being easy, the fight is super fun though. You just slide around dodging those things he shoots up in the sky and occasionally he'll show up in the background as a glob of pixels before trying to leap on top of you and attempt to kill Mega Man X. But he's never been successful throughout any of his many attempts, so I wouldn't call this guy the hardest Maverick unless it was April 1st. Bubble Crab is another blatantly easy Maverick with or without the weakness. The only way he could become a problem is if you put your controller down for too long and he starts spawning too many of those weird things, but you should never let him do that under any circumstances. Wire Sponge is probably the first Maverick most people take on, and he's certainly easy, but I actually don't think he is the easiest. I still take him on first, but it's only because of the upgrades you can get early in his stage. His boss fight can be a little tiny bit challenging when you don't have very many health upgrades, but even still, I'm sure my subscribers can handle this guy without any issues. Morph Moth literally only shows up for the second half of the boss fight, so there's no way he's the hardest. I mean, I guess the pinata thing does kind of move around a little bit, which can hurt you if you happen to be in the way of the pinata's path, but is there really a single person out there who thinks this butterfly is the hardest maverick from Mega Man X2? Because I sure hope not. Crystal Snail is one of my least favorite mavericks of all time, but it's only because he's so ugly and annoying. His boss fight is actually rather easy, weakness or not, but if you do have his weakness, you get to bully him and kick his shell around the room. And well, you know, I like doing that. With Crystal Snail out of the way though, this means the hardest maverick from Mega Man X2 is coming down to either Wheel Gator or Magna Centipede. Now again, both of these guys are actually pretty easy, but one of them must still be the hardest. Both of these fights are certainly doable with or without the weaknesses, but I think the best way to describe these battles are frustrating or annoying. Even if you have the weaknesses, there isn't some quick kill like most of the other bosses. Wheel Gator camps underneath the swamp water for the majority of the fights while waiting you out, and Magna Centipede just spams the teleport button just like Boomer Kawanger. This is already annoying on its own, but when you use the respective weakness against each of these guys, they end up seeming to stall even more than usual, which just makes me want to kill them without using any weakness. As far as the fights go though, this is going to be a battle of who's more annoying since neither of them are all that challenging. Well, aside from the challenge of not falling asleep while waiting, you could argue maybe Wheel Gator's fight is more frustrating since you have to jump on the wall constantly, unlike the Magna Centipede fight where you just plain wait, but Magna Centipede teleports to much more awkward angles that are especially hard to hit if you're using your plain old dude. This is a really tough comparison, but I'm gonna have to give it to Magna Centipede. Wheel Gator is frustrating too, but I feel like for some reason he's more predictable, whereas Magna Centipede's annoying antics are literally all over the place. And for that reason, Magna Centipede is the hardest Maverick from Mega Man X2. Mega Man X3, my favorite Mega Man X game of all time. Or at least that's what I want you guys to believe. I love Mega Man X3 a lot, but one of the only valid complaints I've ever heard about this game is that it's significantly more difficult than both Mega Man X and Mega Man X2, especially regarding its Mavericks. But you know what? First of all, get good. We don't need any more noobs playing Mega Man X or sharing their stupid opinions. So if you aren't good at Mega Man, just leave it to the experts like me and my subscribers. But in all seriousness, this game isn't nearly as bad as people like to pretend it is. Even even the hardest Mavericks in this game are still super manageable, so let's take a look. Blizzard Buffalo is obviously the easiest Maverick from Mega Man X3. I mean, not only did he already win the award for being the easiest, but also look at this guy. Volt Catfish is probably the second easiest, but I also just like looking at Volt Catfish because he makes me laugh. Fighting Volt Catfish is not as fun as just plain old looking at him, but it's still a rather enjoyable experience overall. Tunnel Rhino is pretty run of the mill and has what looks like maybe the easiest boss fight of all time, but really it's only like maybe top 10 easiest boss fights of all time, it's not number one. This fight isn't hard or anything, but Tunnel Rhino does a ton of damage and has a couple of switch ups he can do to mix you up, and while they aren't hard to keep track of and dodge, if you do get mixed up and get hit by one of his attacks, you might lose like half of your health, which is ridiculous. Gravity Beetle is a pretty standard fight in this game, I mean I love watching this man whip out his balls and throw them all over the room, but it's not like it's difficult for me to do that. Blast Hornet has one of my favorite Maverick designs of all time, but his boss battle gets on my nerves. 
I'm probably a little bit biased against these tiny bee enemy things, but I wish you would just cut that crap out. It's still a pretty fun boss battle overall, and if you have the weakness, it's more like a cutscene, so I'm not calling this guy the hardest maverick either. Crushed Crawfish is one of my favorite mavericks in this game for a variety of reasons, but we've already covered that in a different video. I love the way this guy looks, I love getting to go to the boss fight, and I even love this guy's stage and weapon. But I would be lying if I tried to tell you this was the easiest fight in the game. In fact, one of the reasons I enjoy it so much is because it's full of tight jumps where you gotta dodge these weird things that he throws out at you. It looks a whole lot easier than it really is, but Crushed Crawfish is certainly not the most difficult Maverick, which means it's going to come down to either Toxic Seahorse or Neon Tiger. Neither of these fights are actually all too bad, but the reason it comes down to these two is a mix of being awkward to deal with while also doing a ton of damage to you. Now, both of these fights do turn into complete jokes if you have their weakness, I think we're all aware of that, but without the weakness, both of these guys can give you a serious run for your money. Plus, I mean, literally every boss in Mega Man X3 is a joke when you have their weakness, so I mean, why would I bring that up? Toxic Seahorse just looks straight up weird, which throws me off out the gate, but he also jumps around these weird heights and angles, which makes it super hard to hit him consistently, while also dodging all of his acid balls. Neon Tiger, on the other hand, is first of all fake Mega Rob Dad's favorite Maverick, but also he jumps around even more than Toxic Seahorse. He also shoots some stuff out of his tail and even has a weird charge up attack that is significantly more annoying to deal with than anything out of Toxic Seahorse's arsenal. This is kind of close, but I do think Neon Tiger is the clear winner here for the hardest Maverick. Toxic Seahorse, of course, can still be tricky, but I feel like he's way less chaotic and more manageable than Neon Tiger, which is why Neon Tiger is the hardest Maverick from Mega Man X3. Mega Man X4, the first Mega Man X game on the PlayStation 1, has the easiest set of Mavericks we've seen so far. Frost Walrus was obviously already granted the award for being the easiest Maverick from Mega Man X4, but the rest of these bozos don't give you much more of a challenge if I'm being totally honest. And I am. Split Mushroom is one of my favorite Mavericks, but he is one of the easiest boss fights of all time. The only challenge here is trying not to get annoyed by all the random quotes Slip Mushroom decides to let slip every few times he gets hit by a charge shot. Slash Beast is also surprisingly easy. He looks like he'd be one of the harder battles in this game, but he's almost easier than Frost Walrus. I guess if you have PTSD from dealing with Slash Man and Mega Man 7 like I do, then you may have some difficulties getting over that, but once you do, you will realize that Slash Beast is no Slash Man, trust me. Web Spider may be the most medium Maverick from Mega Man X4, but I guess we'll never know since I'm not going to make that video. This fight is really solid overall, though it somehow reminds me of the Wire Sponge fight from Mega Man X2 for some reason, but I don't know why. The Storm Owl is a Maverick that my comment section has said is difficult on numerous occasions, but respectfully, what the heck are you talking about? I know with his weakness, he's obviously easy, but even without his weakness, I have never had any trouble with this guy once in my entire life. I've always just thought he was Storm Eagle's nerdy little brother or something, so I always just gave him no thought aside from that lame insult. I'm not sure why you guys in the comments are having trouble with Storm Owl of all people, but he is not the hardest Maverick from Mega Man X4 at all. I'd say Cyber Peacock is actually much harder than Storm Owl, and even Cyber Peacock is pretty manageable. Sometimes if you get out of rhythm or let your guard down while those missiles are around, you can get hit a few times and lose a bunch of your health, but really this is just a standard Mega Man X Maverick fight if you're asking me, which you are, this is my video. Magma Dragoon is certainly the coolest Maverick from Mega Man X4, and he has an epic battle to go along with his epicness, but you're able to sneak a mech suit into his fight, which makes you overpowered, so I guess Magma Dragoon can't be the hardest because of that. Even if we aren't going to count the mech suit though, I still feel like this fight looks a lot harder than it really is. If Magma Dragoon did the same amount of damage to you as some of the Mega Man X3 Mavericks do, then this would be a completely different story, but I have never struggled in this battle, even without the legendary mech suit. So, Magma Dragoon is not the hardest. This means the hardest Maverick from Mega Man X4 is actually Jet Stingray. Now, this may come as a surprise to some of you, but please remember that every Maverick in Mega Man X4 is offensively easy, so Jet Stingray just won process of elimination. There isn't really any Anything super difficult about this fight that stands out, but he does have a large variety of attacks that he spams you with, which becomes annoying at the very least. So yeah, not sure if anyone saw this coming, but Jet Stingray is the hardest Maverick from Mega Man X4. With the Mega Man X Legacy Collection 1 titles taken care of, it's now of course time to take on the X Legacy Collection 2, where the hardest bosses are even harder, and the easiest bosses are even easier! Which of course makes my job a whole lot, uh... Wait, does that mean my- does that make my job harder or easier? Maybe more medium?
Mega Man X5, the end of the original Mega Man X story, and the beginning of the Mega Man X Legacy Collection 2. The Mavericks in this game are super extreme in every direction, with some of the easiest and hardest battles in the entire series. Grizzly Slash, of course, has already won the easiest Maverick award, and he's easy for the same reasons as Slash Beast, but I've already talked about that enough in my easiest Mavericks video, so go check that out if you really want to hear about easy Mavericks. Today, we're talking about hard Mavericks, so get out of here if you can't handle it. Izzy Glow is also super easy, though. This this guy is a literal bug, so I guess it is logical, but all of my subscribers should be able to crush this guy easily. Matrix is a really weird boss battle, and I've talked extensively before about how this design just feels weird to me, but weirdly, this fight is actually pretty fun. It's not even close to being one of my favorites or anything like that, but for how much this man appalls me, the fight always manages to be a good time, even though it is still too easy to be considered for this video. Axel the Red has my favorite design in Mega Man X5, and maybe this guy is the most medium maverick, but he certainly is is not the hardest or the easiest, but he is the best Maverick from Mega Man X5, which you would have known already if you saw my best Mavericks video. Dark Dizzy is a big old bat, and he definitely has one of the coolest Maverick designs in this game, but the fight is a little bit pathetic. He usually just flies around barely out of reach of your buster, and occasionally he'll spawn in some literal beginner bat enemies for you to kill, but this guy is a piece of cake. He does have some weird, colorful, wire-framed line attacks that he uses once he gets to low health, but those are just for show. Please do not die to them. Duff McWhalen can surprise surprisingly be a challenge sometimes if you aren't careful just because there are spikes in his stage. I'm not sure if that's technically the spikes that are the hard part or if they're technically not a part of his boss fight or something, but those spikes are certainly around whenever I fight to Duff McWhalen, so I'm counting them. Even with the spikes, this guy is obviously not the hardest Maverick, but he's still not going to be the easiest either. It's just way too easy to get straight up cheesed by a weird pattern of ice cubes coming at you in just the wrong way. But with Duff McWhalen eliminated, this means it's down to either the Skyver or Squid Adler. Both both of these guys are stupid and horrible, but only one of them still gives me nightmares to this day. The Skyver is a fight that looks really easy at first, but once you understand how easily you can get cheesed, you'll understand the pain of us Mega Man X5 players. Basically, most of his attacks are easy to dodge for the most part, but if you slip up and get hit by even one attack, then you're going to get sent flying off the stage and into a bottomless pit, which is not fun. Squid Adler, on the other hand, just has a pit of doom for a boss battle room, and his attacks are all the most annoying combinations of projectiles and obstacles that any game designer has ever come up with. If you were unable to tell by my wording somehow, I think Squid Adler is way harder than the Skyver. The Skyver is certainly cheese and I hate him a lot, but once you learn the cheese, you will not only stop dying, but you'll also start to enjoy the fight. And maybe if you're lucky, those nightmares will finally stop. But Squid Adler is just a cesspool of every horrible Mega Man boss battle feature combined into one stinky pile of garbage. I hate this fight, it's horrible and it's stupid, which is why Squid Adler is the hardest Maverick from Mega Man X5. Mega Man X6, the last Mega Man X game on the PlayStation 1, and the first Mega Man X game with the number 6 in the title on the PlayStation 1. This is another game with weirdly varying Mavericks, because some of these guys are the easiest fights in all of Mega Man, while others are the hardest fights in all of Mega Man. And some are the hardest fights in all of Mega Man until you figure out some weird glitch, making them become the easiest fights in all of Mega Man. Round Scarvage already won the award for the easiest Maverick in Mega Man X6 on account of being a Dung Beetle, so he is not going to be the hardest Maverick in this game. I hope we do not have any objections. Commander Yarmark is another fairly easy one. I like this guy's design a ton, and his fight is still pretty fun, but it's just painfully easy, if anything. Blizzard Wolfing also has a very strange fight. Nine times out of ten, it's the easiest thing in the entire world, but every now and then, he gets a weird pattern going and causes some trouble. Not any kind of trouble that me and my subscribers wouldn't be able to handle, but, you know, trouble nonetheless. Metal Shark Player may be this game's most medium maverick, but I actually like this guy a whole lot. I honestly just wish the fight wasn't so so easy because I love this design a ton and I feel like Metal Shark Player did not get much justice in Mega Man X6, but I guess there's always Mega Man X9. Infinity Majinion is one of those Mavericks that are very hard to take down the first time you fight them, but are really easy every time once you learn the trick. The trick is basically just not letting his clones get out of hand, or in other words, get good and stop being bad. Shield Sheldon actually used to give me a little bit of trouble the first couple of times I played Mega Man X6, but then I learned how to play as Zero and that changed fairly quickly. Even as Mega Man X though, this fight is 
is not impossible as long as you are comfortable with the mechanics of the game and everything, but it can still be frustrating. With Shield Sheldon eliminated from the chance of being the hardest Maverick, though, it's now down to either Rainy Turtleoid or Blaze Heatnix. Rainy Turtleoid is the biggest, thickest Maverick in the entire game, while Blaze Heatnix may be the coolest and most annoying, which is not a common combination of traits to have, so I guess we should really be trying to enjoy this. Rainy Turtleoid at first seems like this huge impossible task of a boss fight with this whole shell crystal junk, but I promise you guys he's not that bad at all, especially with Zero. Blaze Heatnix, on the other hand, seems like he would be easy every time you face him, but he just never is. I don't think Blaze Heatnix is frustrating or impossible or anything like that, but it's just really annoying trying to deal with this guy on top of all the purple fire on the ground. Rainy Turtleoid is iconically difficult, but regardless, I've still got to give it to Blaze Heatnix. It's a hard choice, but I mean, when Zero is able to murder pretty much every Maverick in this game within just a couple of frames, it's going to be hard talking about anything in this section. So yeah, Blaze Heatnix is the hardest Maverick from Mega Man X6. Mega Man X7, the first Mega Man X game on the PlayStation 2, has a group of Mavericks that looks like they've just escaped the circus. Somehow the color palettes and even the designs for the X7 Mavericks seem a lot closer to the original Mega Man X1 designs than any other game, which is tremendously impressive considering these Mavericks also look very goofy. These Mavericks are also all extremely easy, with the exception of like two of them, but we'll get to the harder ones towards the end. Tornado Tunyon is of course the easiest because, well, he's an onion. The worst an onion is gonna do is make you cry after after you've already cut it into pieces, which I imagine would not be very effective against Mega Man X, though I guess this guy is also a tornado. Ride Borski is literally an upgraded enemy, and the actual boss fight reflects that heavily. It's clear this Mega Man X2 enemy has learned a couple of new moves over the years, but the skill level is still practically the same. Snipe Anteater's only chance at taking you out is acting as weird as possible in hopes that you'll just exit the game. And in all seriousness, I guess there is some challenge in this fight while you have to battle the camera, but Snipe Anteater himself never contributes to any of the challenge. Goth Storm Eagle has the most standard fight in the entire game for sure. I would say he's the most medium maverick, but Storm Eagle could never be associated with mediocrity. So this guy isn't the easiest, hardest, or the most medium maverick from Mega Man X7, but he is the most goth. Soldier Stone Kong has a really fun fight and also a great design, but like I've said before, this battle is just awkward to me. I can get the hang of it and everything just fine, but something about either the controls or the camera just really bothers me in this fight specifically, which makes me not like it. But even still, it's not the hardest fight, or even really a hard fight, so let's just move on. Splash Warfly, the Narc Snitch, could be the biggest nerd for Mega Man X7, but his fight is actually pretty challenging if you don't have his weakness. It's not the hardest fight to ever or anything, but it's like if Wheel Gator traded in all of his cool points to join the police academy. Vanishing Gungaroo could be the most frustrating fight, but it's not the hardest. It is certainly hard, and a very frustrating time for everyone involved, but this guy somehow won the best Maverick award from Mega Man X7. This is an outrage. I'm not sure who allowed this, but I want to find this guy and have a stern talking with him. But anyway, I think we all know the hardest Maverick from Mega Man X7 is Flame Hyenard. Not only do you have to fight the most ugly and obnoxious Maverick of all time, but you also have to fight his clones on top of a lava tank. I'm not sure why Capcom decided to make the worst thing humanity has ever created when designing Flame Hyenard, but they did and now we're stuck with it. You basically have to play this battle on mute if you don't want to lose your sanity, but even without the ear piercing quotes, this fight is still hard. You have to take down his stupid lava tank, hop up on board, and then try to cheese out a win from his horrible boss. I hate Flame Hyenard, and so do you, so let's just call this guy the worst Maverick from Mega Man X7 and move on with our day and the video, alright? Sound good? Alright, let's go. Let's go see Mega Man X8. Mega Man X8 is the newest mainline Mega Man X game to ever release, which is hopefully a sentence that will age horribly. The Mavericks in this game seem a bit weird, but not as weird as Mega Man X7, if that makes sense, and on top of that, they all also seem fairly easy, so choosing the hardest is going to be difficult. Bamboo Pandemonium is, of course, the easiest Maverick, despite being big, thick, and intimidating, so this guy will not be the hardest. Neither will Avalanche Yeti, since this is an Ice Boss, and we all know that Ice Bosses in Mega Man X are skillless noobs. Earthrock Trilobite is definitely one of 
the easiest Mavericks in this game, as long as you don't fall asleep to all those purple walls he throws your way. I mean, seriously, pick another attack, man. Come on, something else. Optic Sunflower is a classic. I've been a fan of Plants vs. Zombies since day one, and I know this joke is getting old, but I will not stop saying it. The fight is overall fun and fairly easy, though, with the only challenge coming from avoiding migraine headaches due to all the flashbangs you get hit by in rapid succession. Gravity and Tunyon is really thick, so you might have trouble concentrating on the battle while that giant wheelbarrow is being trailed around, but if you can take your eyes off that big caboose for long enough, you should be able to murder this man without any issues. Dark Mantis looks scary, and I feel like they should be a lot harder than they are, but the fight is just easy. I'm sorry, Dark Mantis is just too slow and doesn't do enough dang damage, so I kill them every time without fail. Burn Rooster is my favorite Maverick from Mega Man X8 for a multitude of reasons that you can see in my best Mavericks video, but I don't know if I would call this guy hard. He's definitely not as easy as most of the other pushovers from this game, but there's no way he's difficult enough to be the hardest Maverick from Mega Man X8. That honor would have to go to Gigabolt Man O' War. I love this man's design despite looking like a 90s McDonald's Happy Meal toy I got over 20 years ago, but this fight is annoyingly hard. It's not impossible or the worst thing in the world or anything like that, but it is just frustrating. Maybe I'm just upset because I feel betrayed by my favorite Mega Man X8 Maverick, but I don't know. It feels undeniable that Gigabolt Man O' War is the hardest Maverick from Mega Man X8. Those were the most difficult Mavericks from every Mega Man X game, X through X8. As always, I hope you guys all enjoyed the video, and I also hope you guys are able to beat some of those Mavericks yourselves. But, uh, if you aren't able to beat those Mavericks, we all know it's because you aren't subscribed. So, what are you waiting on? Subscribe, please!